What is it about sports that makes billions of people throughout history appreciate it? Whether you're on the field or in the crowd, it's ultimately the same thing, a game. Maybe it's the camaraderie between not only the players, but the fans. The fans suffer with the player or team for every loss. Ping pong is no different. Where it differs from volleyball or basketball, however, is this focus on the individual. The player's choices affect the player alone. Much like many fighting games, audiences appreciate the idea of an individual being responsible for their own decisions. With the lack of teammates, what is there to worry about? It becomes a battle of wit, willpower, and talent. Every sport requires hard work, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee the results that you'd want. The sections where talent and raw willpower overlap is where progress is found. By realizing your talent and sharpening them, success is only a step away. Or so it may seem. So we're given two characters, Pekka and Smile, or Smile and Pekka. Dios can often be an enlightening thing to have in a series. They encourage each other through their struggles and hardships, but where this series differs is in the development the characters experience by themselves. Of course, they have their respective mentors and influences, but the personal journey that they take is a choice that they needed to make on their own. Pekka and Smile have a somewhat odd relationship as you can describe their bond as more of acquaintances rather than friends. From an early age, Smile constantly looked up to Pekka as someone that he aspired to be. When juxtaposed to his current self, it becomes evident that this is the very fuel for the rivalry. From the beginning, the line, the hero appears, the hero appears, the hero appears, is immediately displayed on the screen. Thematically, it's the cornerstone of the anime. In Pekko's case, it was his struggles that led him to believe that he was capable of becoming a hero in his own way. When Kong arrives in Japan, Pekko immediately becomes discouraged at their differences in ability. This is even more evident in his match against Sakuma. The gimmicks that Sakuma was employing in their match brought him down. As a result of his loss against him, he quit ping pong. In addition to picking up smoking, he lost sight of what initially was the world to him. In comparison to Smile's apathetic attitude towards the sport, Pekko saw this as a complete validation that he was incompetent to ever be good at table tennis. It was only upon being trained by Obaba that he truly began learning the fundamentals of the sport. However, it's important to see who saved him from the depths of the deep waters that he was in. Sakuma, being the one who defeated him, managed to show him that table tennis was still something that he could be good at. In stark contrast to Pekko, Smile is well recognized for his abundant supply of talent. However, he lacks the drive and charisma that Pekko possesses. The irony is that his name alone exemplifies what separates them. The only point in which he finds his inner Smile is when he faces Pekko in episode 11. Similar to Pekko's experiences with Sakuma, Smile had various points that changed him for the better. His teacher and mentor, Joe, exposes his weaknesses with no remorse with the simple line, People who don't know themselves are always the ones who struggle hard to win because they want to prove something. We can begin to truly see how Joe was trying to impact Smile. Apathy is a key part of understanding Smile with an almost inhumane demeanor of playing. He is quite robotic and automated. Lacking emotion or drive, he plays his sport with no real motivation. Joe, however, exposes this as he is well acquainted with losing. When it's revealed in Joe's match with Ryu, it becomes increasingly clear that Joe found that there were some lines that he simply would not cross. When given the opportunity to win, Joe found that he could either take advantage of Ryu's condition with his damaged knee or let him win. He chooses the latter, a decision that forever left a mark on him. Joe had the wings and attempted to fly, but did he make it? Did he cross the ocean? Upon Smile being mentored by Joe, Smile continued to show that he could effortlessly play well with strong perseverance. Joe wanted to show him the love and passion that one can have for the sport. Similar to Pekko, Joe found love in the mere fact of being able to play such a beautiful sport. Smile mercilessly takes on anyone that happens to step in his path. In his match against Joe, he shows that when an opponent challenges him aggressively, he fearfully retreats. Engaging in Smile's mind games, Joe completely deconstructs his methods. He knows how Smile hits the ball when it has been served. Ultimately, he knows that Smile has no perseverance. Smile doesn't want to escape his comfort zone because he knows there will be pain and anger, anguish and despair, nihilism and ruin. The only way Smile started to return Joe's serves was by accepting his own robotic nature, by having calculated moves that lacked any hint of spontaneity. This of course worked, resulting in Joe falling over in complete faith that Smile can finally return the ball. This is because he is aware that Tsukimoto now understands that the ball chases him and not the other way around. The key theme of ping pong is how one responds to failure. Many of the players in the anime react to differently, and that's mainly because failure hurts. It's painful to know that you're currently not good enough to achieve the dreams that you want. 
In Kong's case, it was coming to Japan with the idea that he could effortlessly defeat everyone in his way. With this confidence, it did serve him well in the beginning, however, in his match against Kazuma, he begins to see how frail this confidence really is. In a competitive environment, it's almost impossible to succeed without having that competitive spirit. However, he does not remain static. During Christmas Eve, he does karaoke and discovers the power of friendship with his team. Similar to the recurring symbol of planes arriving and leaving, he is constantly worried about his arrival at this fictional place of success, but once he encounters defeat, he realizes that success may just be where he currently is. During this Christmas scene, you truly begin to see the varying effects of loss. With Kong enjoying the holiday, Peko drunk on a beach by himself, and Smile also being alone in isolation, it's interesting to see just how many ways one can change because of failure. Similar to Yuasa's other acclaimed anime, The Tatami Galaxy, the main character Watashi can't change the past, and that hurts like hell. While the Tatami Galaxy addresses college life and the transition into adulthood, Ping Pong addresses adolescence and the doubt that comes with it. With Masaaki Yuasa being one of the most prolific and experimental directors in the anime industry, it's interesting that he can consistently be inconsistent. Each series has a different aesthetic with different mediums and styles utilized. In Ping Pong, however, he is faithful to the style of Taio Matsumoto. Perhaps seeing that Tekon Kinkri could adapt his style into a film, Yuasa was inspired to take his hand at developing his manga into an 11 episode series. With rugged and unrefined character designs, he utilizes framing to create a realistic view of a match of table tennis. Along with the fluid motion, it captures the energy and life of the sport. Having remorse and resentment towards the decisions you made in the past will only strengthen the likelihood of never finding happiness. Upon Peko being trained by Obaba, Peko found that it wasn't ever about losing. It was about playing your heart and guts out with every ounce of love that you have in your body. When you're enjoying what you're doing, the results aren't the concern. Upon Peko defeating both Kong and Kazuma, the dragon was finally slain. Even with a busted knee, Peko was able to hone in on his skills while having fun. In his match against Kazuma, the hero really returns. Until this point, Kazuma saw the point in him playing as a need. Similar to Kong, there was an end goal that was simply winning. In his match, the dragon does fly. Smile's familiar tune that he hums truly brings the show full circle. It's a motif that helps Peko in his most trying moment. In one of the most climactic scenes I've ever seen, Peko erupts to the track Peko, blaring out, the melody following the hum that Smile created. It's the theme of the hero. Peko helps Kazuma enjoy the sport, and as a result of this, Kazuma truly and genuinely smiles. Ultimately, everyone does gain wings, however, some can only take them so far. Out of the full love that he has for the sport and out of the sheer respect it has for Kazuma, he can't help but express his enlightenment. In Peko's finals match against Smile, it's again shown that Smile is on his third game with a messed up knee. Unlike Joe with his match against Ryu, Smile sees no problem with using that to his advantage. After all, a hero has no weaknesses. Perhaps Smile felt that blood tasted like iron because he truly had no limits when fighting Peko. He let out his inner nature, which was automated and robotic, but free and spontaneous at the same time. Even with this, Peko still doesn't see failure as an option because regardless of the outcome, he will be happy that he tried his hardest and poured his sweat and tears into what he loved. So time skip. Hoshino and Kong are playing in the Olympics. Tsukimoto becomes a teacher, Cosmo follows his footsteps, Akuma becomes a proud father. They all took different routes, but they were still satisfied. Arguably because of their encounters with, with Peko. They accept where they are, but also where they will go. If this anime has something one thing, it's the power of a genuine and sincere smile. Pouring your love and heart into things that you do will always bear great results. With the simple premise of high schoolers playing table tennis, this anime goes through hell and high water to not only show the technicalities of the sport, but more importantly how this game impacts the characters on a deeper and psychological level. It's a sport that you have to sweat bullets to be excellent at, but that's a challenge that Peko, Smile, and the other players rose up to. That is why this anime has and will remain one of my all-time favorites. I watched this anime at a point in my life where I was beginning college and I didn't quite know what direction I wanted to go in. There's so many choices and so much competition in every field that it's easy to simply throw in the towel and stay static. However, competition doesn't always have to be about winning. That's what this anime taught me. If you're enjoying what you're doing and are putting every ounce of love and effort into what you do, the action of simply doing and moving will eliminate any doubts about the results. We'd love to know what everyone thinks about table tennis and sports anime as a whole. Feel free to follow us on Twitter and sub to our channel to stay updated on our future videos. Thank you very much for watching, and stay well.